Hello everyone, this is Robert with Team Copperhead and I have Copperhead sitting next to me. What I wanted to do in this video is give you a little bit of context on just how loud a BattleBot can be. So I've got a SPL meter, good old school analog one from Radio Shack, and this audio recorder. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you, if you were in an enclosed space like my workshop, just how loud these things can get. And spoiler alert, it's really, really loud. The sound or the tone that a particular BattleBot makes is really a lot like its signature or its fingerprint. No two drum spinners will sound exactly the same and, you know, horizontal spinner, vertical spinner, all of these bots are going to sound just slightly different just due to the geometry of the weapon, how fast it's spinning, and the rest of the body and everything else that's going on. In Copperhead's case, we use this single tooth drum that spins up front, and in the back here, it gets relatively close to the actual body. So as it spins around, this tooth is pushing the air away, and in the front, it's a relatively low pressure because we have nothing up here. But then when it comes around and comes very close to the back of the frame, it kind of goes more into a high pressure. So you get this kind of chopping or humming sound. And dependent on how fast the drum is spinning and you know how much throttle we're giving it, it has kind of its own unique tone. And that's ultimately what creates the sound. Now, not every robot has a distinct or signature sound. For instance, we can probably close our eyes and imagine what Minotaur sounds like or Ice Wave sounds like. But we can't really think of what Tombstone sounds like because that blade really isn't chopping as much air. It's not really going from a high pressure or a low pressure to a high pressure in the same way that something like Copperhead is. My main reason for making this video is to help give you a better context on what these things sound like in person. On TV and on YouTube videos, you get a much different um, sense of scale, and it just doesn't really come across the same way because the audio is being recorded um, you know, remotely or outside the arena, something like that. And you just don't really hear the um, true rawness of what these things actually sound like. I would highly encourage anyone that's into BattleBots or into robot combat in general is to go down in the description and look for a couple links where you can find a local event. Chances are there's probably a local event near you and you can go check it out and see these things fight in person. Even at the one and the three pound classes, which are insect classes, even at that size, they can get really loud and really scary and you can see some crazy stuff. So if you're into this at all, I highly recommend finding an event near you and going. And then of course, you can attend BattleBots. If you follow my page on Facebook, I will be posting when they announce the tickets to go actually view the BattleBots in general. But viewing it in person, I think, is the best way to get a sense of scale of these things. And I'm going to try and do my best in this video to at least give you an idea what it sounds like. For recording the actual audio, I am using a Tascam DR05, which is a decent little audio recorder, and I have the levels all set where I need it to. And then for measuring the actual SPL, or the sound pressure level in decibels, I'm using this analog Radio Shack meter. I will be running it out here in my workshop, which is about 850 square feet. And this is actually somewhat important because the BattleBox Arena actually does kind of amplify the sound, and it does change the characteristics. If I were to take this outside, it definitely sounds a lot different because there isn't that reverberation and that resonance that you get from an enclosed space. The last thing that I want to talk about before we fire up this beast is safety. Is it 100% safe to run one of these outside of the BattleBots Arena? No, it is not. There is always a risk factor every single time you turn one of these on. The only way that you can have a 100% success rate with a BattleBot is to never build one and never turn it on. That being said, I'm going to be relying on the safety features of the bot. We have a fail safe that if it loses radio contact, it will stop running. And additionally, we have two separate power switches, one for the drive and one for the weapon. The drive will be not activated, so it will not be able to drive. There's just no power to that drive system. And lastly, I will not be in the same room as this. I will be operating completely remotely. There is still a greater than 0% chance risk of something happening, but the only thing you can do is minimize all of the risk factors. So that being said, let's get this down off the lift and turn it on. 
Here is the setup. The SPL meter is two and a half feet away. Perspective just kind of maybe makes it look a little closer. And back off camera, about six feet away is the audio recorder. So let's turn it on. So that's what Copperhead sounds like up close and personal. I should have mentioned this in the very beginning of the video, but it is best to watch this video or re-watch this video with a really high quality pair of headphones or a nice home theater system that has a subwoofer on it. There is a wide range of sound going on here. And if you look at um, the full spectrum, there's a lot of information in the sub 60 hertz range going down into the 20 and even 10 hertz range. I was really surprised to see my subwoofer really kicking in in the low spectrum. And when this thing is spinning down, there's a lot of information in the 10 to 20 hertz range. So pretty interesting. The SPL meter maxed out around 112 decibels. Um, you can kind of Google that around and kind of see what that relates to in real life. It is very loud. Um, I think a jackhammer is, you know, 105, 110. A chainsaw up close is about 110, somewhere around there. And I think somewhere around 120 is, you know, starting to be hearing damage. And OSHA recommends anything above 110, only maybe about 15 minutes worth of exposure in a day. So this is extremely loud. Granted, it was only about two and a half feet or about a meter away, but it can still produce quite a bit of sound given that that's not really even its primary purpose. So hopefully that gives you a little bit greater context into just how loud and powerful these are. I plan on maybe doing a couple more videos like this just to put more things into perspective for you. But as always, thanks for watching. Uh, check out the Copperhead Facebook page, my Facebook page, and keep watching this channel for more videos about Copperhead. See you then.